Katie's taking care of me. Hey, thanks, Katie. <laughs> Changing lives. So glad. Oh man. Right there. Boom. Crazy. Yeah, just, just, uh, just, just getting I mean, ready for the race tomorrow. Getting ready for the race okay, tomorrow. You know, but you're just doing it so you hold where he goes to. Yeah. Notice a, a distinct difference. Okay. So that, along with just really stretching uh, everything, yep. you're going to really feel a difference. You should feel a difference. Yep. So this is not as hard as the other one is, but you can tell you have some. Yep. Fun. Old yeah. stuff. Or a meter runner or a hundred or a. Uh, but even that, the force right. on those is the speed. Just a couple minutes, okay? Five, it's hard. Right. Yeah. We're going to film that. <laughs> High five. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, guys. Seven to a four on the pain threshold. Seven to a four on the pain. I'm not even kidding. For the PF in my heel, just like getting in there into that scar tissue. <sighs> Thank you, Katie. Thank you, Katie. You're rocking it. Thank you again to Katie for rubbing out my, my calf, my soleus, my foot. It feels amazing. And I'm not out of the woods yet. I know that I'm not out of the woods yet, but huge improvement from yesterday and definitely the day before and the day before that. I digress. Guys, I just did a shakeout run. I'm going to tell you my routine for shakeouts in the shed here in a minute, but that is the key word of the day, shakeout, and that is the question of the day. What is your shakeout routine the day before a race? Comment below, I'd appreciate it. And of course, read everyone else's comments, jump into their conversation, who knows? Maybe you'll learn something about a tip or a trick that somebody else does for their shakeout routine. And on that note, actually, hold on. <laughs> and on that note, I do not advise this, but I am, all right, that's better, we're out of the wind. Okay, I do not advise this, making a shoe decision for your race day the day before. Do it at least a week before so you can just go fast in the shoe. Now, I have gone fast in these three shoes over the last two weeks, but um, anyway, I wouldn't advise doing this. However, because of my plantar fasciitis, I just want to see how it reacts to the different shoes. So this is the Vaporfly 4%. Bear in mind, there's no tread, so I don't know. We'll see. And then we've got the Turbo, and then we've got the, sorry, we've got the Solomon S-Lab Sense 6 SG, which stands for soft ground. Essentially what I'm gonna do now is go back out and do some strides and just see in these different shoes and just see how the PF reacts. Capiche? All right, come on. Come. Again, thank you for answering the question of the day. Okay, shakeout routine, here's mine. Essentially, I warm up, quarter mile, half mile, not much, just enough to get the legs moving a little bit. I stretch for 15 minutes, and then I go do a three mile jog. I just did that around my house. And then I, do, I come back, stretch again, do the strides, which you just watched me do the strides in the different shoes. I wouldn't recommend doing all the different shoes, but I'm doing that in order to figure out what's going to work. And I'll just tell you right now, I'm going to eliminate one shoe right now. The Vaporfly is out of the running and it's not because there's no tread on the bottom. It's because of the stack height, the stack height of the heel. It's going to be a little too risky for rolling an ankle. I'm not too worried about slipping out, even you know, even though the, there's basically no lug action on the bottom of this shoe, but it's the stack height is just a little too high for a trail race. I wanted to wear it so bad, but I don't think I'm not going to. I'm not going to. Okay, so then I do the strides. I come back. I stretch again. After stretching again, I like to soak, and then I eat dinner, 
And before bed, this is one of the most important parts, is to lay out all of your gear in your house, in your hotel room, wherever you're at the night before a race. Make sure you've got your singlet, your shorts, your bib number. I don't have my bib number. They didn't have early check-in, but it's really nice to have the bib number the night before a race. And then, of course, your shoes, your socks, any warm clothes you're going to need for the warm-up. And here's a tip of the day, your driver's license. Because, yes, some races, like tomorrow's race, they will not give you your bib number unless you can prove your your you. So don't forget your driver's license. And then, of course, a drop bag so you can put all your running, your warm-up stuff in a drop bag. And they should have an area that's designated for your drop bag to go to. So just a few tips for the shakeout routine. And that's what I do. Okay. Here's what happened last year at the Backcountry Half Marathon in Highlands Ranch, Colorado. This would have been 2017, 365 days ago. Essentially, I look pretty happy there at the end, don't I, don't I? Well, I was not very happy. I was a little livid inside. Essentially, I was leading the race with about two and a half miles to go. I missed a turn. In my humble opinion, the turn was not marked well enough. So I added probably two and a half to three minutes to my time, and it was not good. I was in first place, missed out on prize money. I was not, I was not a pleased uh, runner. But thankfully, the race director, I let him know that, listen, Please, next year, have someone on this corner and mark the course so, so well. And actually, I'm just going to add a little bonus question. Have you ever gotten lost in a race? If so, what happened? Where was it at? All right. Drum roll, please. Uh, which shoe am I leaning toward? Whew, it's hard. It's hard. I'm leaning toward the Solomon. Oh, man. I'm on the fence still. I'm sorry. I think I promised you yesterday that I would tell you which shoe I was going to wear in the race. And I, I think I will see how the PF feels in the morning, but I'm leaning toward the Solomon, okay? I just did the stride. It felt great. This guy has lugs on the bottom, which is good, but it's definitely more aggressive. So how will my PF react to the aggressiveness? But uh, I think the, the tread on the bottom of this turbo is fine as well. I think it'll do the trick. Oh, it's, it's so hard. It's so hard. I digress. I digress. All right, time to go eat and then lay everything out. And I'm going to show you kind of my strategy for laying everything out on the table inside. Come on. Come on. Something in. Hel healthy dinner. Healthy dinner before the race. Joseph, what do you think about tomorrow? Come on, YouTube. Let's go, YouTube. Let's go. <laughs> I will probably get first place. He's not gone first place. He's only <laughs> <laughs> what he said. What he said. That was amazing, Joseph. Woo -woo. Joseph wants me to get first place tomorrow. Go, Papa. Go, go, go. With this dinner in my belly, I think I will. I think I, I will. Forgot. And voila. Just like that, we're ready to go. I always start with the feet first because if you forget your socks, 
you're gonna have some issues. So start from the bottom, work your way up the body. And uh, so I've got my shoes laid out, my socks laid out, everything's laid out for the racing. And then on a chair, you can't quite see it on camera, but on a chair, I have my warm up gear. But the most important stuff is laid out on the coffee table. You can do this at a hotel room, on your bed, anywhere in your house or in your hotel room, wherever you're at the night before a race, in order to make sure you have everything. Because you don't want to be fretting on race day morning. You don't want to be forgetting anything. So anything. anyway, everything's laid out. And actually, I just forgot I need gloves because it's supposed to be a little chilly tomorrow. So I'm glad I did this. Thank you for reminding me, YouTube. I'm going to go grab my gloves. Hold on, hold on. Bada bing, bada boom, got the gloves. I'm gonna hold on. I'm gonna lay them out so I don't forget them in the morning. All right, we're ready. We're ready to rock and roll. Okay, what is my race day strategy? Knowing the race, knowing for the most part a decent amount of the competition. We'll see. Anybody could show up on race day. That's just like fast as all get out. And so I got to be a little flexible. But frankly, I'm gonna go out hard and and hang on. That's I I did not feel this confident. 365 days ago. So I went out a lot slower, didn't take the lead until about mile eight. Tomorrow, um, if I'm not in the lead at mile one and a half or two, I'd be uh, I'd be a little surprised. So I'm serious. I, and I'm not like trying to boast or anything. That's just like knowing my fitness, knowing the time trial I did last week, the half marathon time trial. So it's all of these factors that you guys can apply to your racing strategy. Like what's my fitness? How have the workouts been going? What you know, maybe I haven't been able to work out as much as I should have, and so therefore I'm going to hold back the first half of the race. Um, so you got to discern your own fitness based on your training schedule. I feel good, I feel confident based on the last, frankly, even just the last three to four weeks of training. So I love you guys. Thanks for being here. I got to go to bed. Well, first I got to edit, and then I got to go to bed so I can wake up and rock and roll with you guys. All right, sound good? Thanks for being here, YouTube. Seek beauty, work hard, love each other. Let's do this. Let's do this. Come on. Come on.